Well, just to give you a really quick recap, right now, for the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at Babylon and how the, the religion of Babylon has influenced the Christianity of today. That ancient religion of Babylon has influenced Christianity today. Mm. And we've been looking at the theology of uh, Babylon. We started that a couple of weeks ago. And we were talking about, basically, it's four things. Salvation by works, the centricity of the building, the authority of the doorkeepers, and misdirected worship. And as we ended in the program last week, we were talking about the authority of the doorkeepers. Yes. The authority that they shouldn't have, by the way, right? So we're going to pick that up. And uh, I, I want to make the statement right off the bat that there's a priesthood in all of the empires of the world. Every, every major empire, every religion has had its priesthood, okay? Even in secular humanism. Hmm. Do you recognize the priesthood? Well, it's generally bureaucrats. <laughs> right, right. But somebody controls access. In the case of religion, it's somebody controls access to God or to heaven, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, I say, you know, I'm not, and it's only facetious a little bit for me to say that in secular humanism, the bureaucrats, at least in the United States of America and many other countries, they become the priesthood because they control access to the benefits of the government, right? right. Or the what what the government offers. issues or offers to people. There's a priesthood in Christianity, but the priesthood in Christianity is under one high priest, Amen. Jesus Christ. It says in Hebrews three one that therefore, holy brethren, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession. Consider Jesus. He's the high priest. Mm -hmm. Then consider the promise that was made through the word of God, through the prophet Isaiah, 750 years before the birth of Jesus Christ, when God spoke to him and said, but you will be called the priests of the Lord. You will be spoken of as ministers of our God. You will eat of the wealth of the nations, and in their riches you will boast. Isaiah 61, 6. And it's notable that Isaiah 61 is where Jesus started his public ministry by taking the scroll in the synagogue and reading from the first verses, okay? Yes, yes. But there is the promise, because remember, there was a Levitical priesthood at that time. Mm -hmm. But the prophecy through Isaiah, speaking to all of God's people, was, you'll be called the priests of the Lord. Royal priesthood. Right. Well, now that, that's exactly right, because that promise was fulfilled after the day of Pentecost, after the, after the crucifixion, after the burial, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. When Peter wrote, but well, before I say what Peter wrote, let me tell you that he was speaking to everybody who had the same kind of faith that he had. That's what it yeah. says in the very first verse of this book, First Peter. Peter kind of faith. Right. And he said, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. So that's speaking to all true believers. We have become a royal priesthood. Amen. And because Jesus is the high priest, we have the boldness, we have the confidence that we can go before the throne of grace. Right. That's been opened up to us. No human being needs to stand between us and God. It says that there is one intercessor. Paul wrote to Timothy and said there is one intercessor between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He is the only one that stands between us and God the Father. Amen. Okay? That is that is so terribly important to true Christianity. All right? I was just thinking about the priesthood, the royal priesthood, but it's going to be a humble well, we have to get into that because absolutely, our relationship with God is based on humility. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, in the in the natural, mankind loves loves himself. It's pride. Of course, yeah. Right. 
And pride wants to raise you up. Mm-hmm. You want to exalt yourself. Yes. But whether you're saved or not saved, listen to this. The Lord God spoke through Paul and said, Every knee shall bow, Amen. and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Every knee shall bow. Everybody will have to call. At the, at the end of the day, everybody will call Jesus Lord. Unfortunately, not everybody will be able to call him Savior. Mm. That's it. That's a choice you have to make today. That's the opportunity and, we have. And calling him Lord is a choice that you should make today. Mm. All right. My Lord.